Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to this chart, as well as many other charts. Now, logarithmic regression is something that we've used many times to help us better understand the price behavior of Bitcoin. And the reason is because logarithmic regression allows you to model price behavior where more accelerated growth happens earlier on. And then as time goes on, it starts to level off a bit more. Now, logarithmic regression helps us to really, um, you know, hammer home the idea of diminishing returns. Diminishing returns is something that is an unfortunate consequence that you will experience as market capitalization, as the market cap of an asset continues to go higher. It will take exponentially more money to move the market cap higher and higher. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people like to speculate on altcoins in bull markets, because it doesn't take nearly as much capital to move the price, okay? But with Bitcoin, as the market cap grows higher and higher, it will take more and more significantly more amounts of money to actually get that price to to continue to go up. So logarithmic regression, therefore, gives you the ability to sort of model diminishing returns using something like that. One of the interesting things is that, you know, a lot of people have, have discussed before that there's no reason Bitcoin should ever go below 20K or even come close to 20K because it's below the prior all time high. Right. Or, or it is the all time high, the prior all time high. And that's never happened before. But a simple logarithmic regression fit to, again, quote unquote, non-bubble data, which is the data that sits outside of mania phases, would show you that a 20K Bitcoin is possible and even a 15K Bitcoin is possible to go back down to the lower part of this regression band. Now, arguably, as I mentioned in 2019, when we first made this regression curve, you should refit it after every cycle, right? Theoretically, you should refit it after every cycle. There's actually a video that I did on my YouTube channel Maybe someone can dig it up, but from like 2019 or 2020, where I showed we fit the data to just this and then this and this, and then we fit it to like, you know, 2010, 2012, and 2015 and 2016 data. And as you continue to fit it to more and more data, it changes, but the, the change in the regression band continues to diminish itself. So for instance, this regression band is fit to data through late 2018, early 2019. If I were to update it, I would basically fit it to this data over here in late 2019 and 2020, and, and maybe even really late 2020 going into early 2021, and then, and then also the data coming in now. If I were going to do it, I would probably wait a few months and then redo it, and it would very likely not change the regression band that much, but it is an exercise that we could do if we wanted to just for academic purposes. Um, but regardless, I, I do think that it shows what is possible, what is not possible. And again, remember that the, the distance from the prior all-time high to the next accumulation phase um, has been getting less and less each, each cycle. So for instance, if I, if I just go over to, say, the, 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 the Bitcoin chart and we look at the regression bands, well, we don't even need to look at the regression bands, but just to put them up there so you can see this, the move from this prior all-time high to the next bottom was about a 400% move to the upside. But the following peak to the next bottom was only about 160% move to the upside, right? So a pretty big difference. So then the, you know, the argument is, well, now we're, it's basically the same so far, right? Like 20K was this top, and now we've been back to 20K. It was in line with this sort of expectation here that, you know, each time it, it does get closer and closer. And there is a non-negligible chance that we eventually go below 20K, especially if inflation continues to remain out of control and the Fed remains hawkish for, you know, for months and months to come. There is a non-negligible chance that it happens. And if it does, you need to be prepared for it, okay? It's not completely out of the question. So with, with all of that in mind, it's useful to look at regression curves like this, try to better identify where we are, right? Where are we? And one of the things I mentioned, I don't know who, who remembers, but, and, and this, sort of, this sort of prediction was, was somewhat off back in 2019, I said that it would take us until Q1 of 2022 at the latest to, to see a, what I called a sustainable 20K. Um, I, I imagine most people watching this don't don't have any, have no idea what I'm talking about. It was something I used to say back in 2019 that it would take until early 2022. Q1 is what I said um, to have a sustainable 20K. 
now we're at the end of Q2 and we're testing 20K. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not convinced that it has to hold. But the reason I made that statement back then was because I, I basically just extrapolated this, you know, this lower regression band out down here and said, well, you know, it's going to take us until early 2022 for us to say, all right, you know, 20K can hold or not. Now that we're facing, you know, a potential recession and, and, and a very hawkish Fed as, as, as inflation continues to soar, I, I don't think we need to take that to the bank. Uh, but it is something that we, you know, we said once upon a time. Now, the upper regression band is something that we actually did make it into. And one, one of the things that's interesting when you look at this chart is once we get out of the lower regression band and, and we're in that mania phase, we tend to just go straight up to the top, right? You don't really spend a whole time lollygagging around. You just go up to the top relatively quickly. Um, and we, we did it yet once again. And so the argument is that now Bitcoin has entered into you know, back into the fair value logarithmic regression band fit to non-bubble data. And it could be in here for a long time, right? I mean, we could even go below it at some point. We went below it once before in March of 2020. We actually went significantly below it on that wick. I mean, this was a 20% a move to the downside. Honestly, back then, I thought it might break, right? I thought it might break because we had just refit it. Um, you know, I, I just refit it to data through here at, at, our, at sometime at this point, I think is when I created it. And after creating it, I then watched it almost break here and it went below it, but then it quickly recovered and we, we continued along our way. So right now, I think it's worthwhile to, to really focus in on the regression curve, again, fit to non-bubble data, and to identify the fact that once we get into this level, we usually stay in it for quite some time, okay? So, you know, if you extend this out or if we just go back over here, you can see that the lower bound on this regression band it's not even going to hit 20K itself until January of 2023. If you were to refit this curve to include new data as it comes in over say the next four or five months, it might shift that down slightly, but it's not going to shift it down a whole lot. Right now, the lower band on this regression band is currently around $15,000. Um, but anyways, I, I, I wanted to provide this update uh, so that we can continue to sort of follow this thing. I know a lot of you guys joined crypto in 2021 and, and you've only ever looked at this chart and wondered why we even had this regression band down here because we were always way up here. Now we're finally back down in the fair value regression band. And I wanted to show you another piece of analysis with this, and that's to actually take the, the price of Bitcoin and divide it by the quote unquote fair value fit to non-bubble data. And you get something that, <coughs> something that looks like this. If you switch it to a logarithmic scale, whenever it's below one, it means it's below the fair value fits non-bubble data. And you can see that it just went below one again. Historically, whenever it goes below one, it is a decent time to accumulate Bitcoin over the macro scale. Doesn't mean we can't go lower, right? I mean, we, we certainly could go lower. We've been lower in the past. Um, even, even, in, even in 2015, you can see we went below 0.8. And right now, it, it's just below, it's right at around one. And, and given the fact that we are likely entering into a recession or we are already in one, uh, I do think it may it would remain uh, very useful or I would say it would be responsible for us to, you know, to continue to to not just assume um, that just because it, it hit one, you know, that we're immediately going to go up, especially since prior cycles show that once you get down to these levels, you can spend some time there before actually going back up again. And you can even drop lower than where we currently are uh, <coughs> before before. Um, there's a more convincing bottom in, but I do think it's worthwhile to to follow, and uh, we will continue to follow it. This is this is one of the reasons why back in early 2021 I was very bearish. If you draw a line through these peaks, you can see it would have connected basically to that to this peak over here. And I I did take you know I I, I was very um, uh, vocal about us needing to go down into a summer lull, and and then and then we could go back up unfortunately we only barely put in a new all-time high after that and now we've come back down into the fair value regression band fit to non-bubble data but hopefully hopefully looking at this chart will help you kind of identify where bitcoin is in the macro under on on the macro scale and to understand that you know whatever comes next over the next year i'm not talking about what happens tomorrow right i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow i don't know what's going to happen next month but over the next year Whatever happens, you're likely looking at, you know, at significant accumulation periods, uh, especially as we gear up for the next Bitcoin halving. Remember, the next Bitcoin halving is in early 2024. A year from now, we're going to be, you know, about we're going to be almost maybe like seven or eight months or maybe a little bit more out <coughs> from the halving. And so we will be gearing up for it. 
I think you have plenty of time ultimately to gear up for the next halving. Uh, it's just a matter of recognizing kind of where we are in the market cycle to also recognize that the Fed is going to need to pivot as well at some point for, for, for risk assets to do well in a sustainable way. And, and there's a good chance that that could happen, you know, in 2023 or 2024, right in time for for the Bitcoin having. So that's an important thing to consider. You know, I think there's a lot of angst in the market, people really wondering what's going to happen. Look, we're going to have we're going to have some occasional rallies and whatnot, but I think we have uh, plenty of time. If you go look at the fair value logarithmic regression band fit to all data, not just non-bubble data, you get something that looks like this. And it would say the fair value is currently closer to $38,000, but we Bitcoin spends a lot of time being undervalued and overvalued. And now you can see it's in a period again yet of undervaluation. And usually when it goes undervalued, it can spend a quite a bit of time there before going back up into being overvalued. So <clears throat> I do hope that this perspective um, gives you some insight into the market. If you, if you guys like this content, remember we have <coughs> Into the Cryptoverse Premium. We have a sale currently going on. Check it out, intothecryptoverse.com, lock in the lower rate. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.